Back to Cuba, our first story tonight, is a little like Back to the Future. It's a place Americans have had limited access to during decades of hostility between the two nations. Now, with a glimmer of easing in those relations, the people of both countries are eager to know more about each other's cultures. So, it was a plum assignment for those on a documentary-making team from CU Boulder when they set out to tell the story of an immigrant who became a well-known public figure in Colorado, who went back to Cuba with them for the film. It's an amazing time to be going to Cuba to see how it's changing. I'm excited. I'm expecting to have a bit of culture shock. So this is some of the equipment we have for Cuba. There are two forms of currency in Cuba, the kooks and then, and then pesos. The veteran traveler is Leanna Clark. So this currency is for tourists, and, but not for the common everyday uh, Cuban. An administrator from the University of Colorado at Denver. That's she great. has made many trips to Cuba. And then we drive to Camagüey. With her, a small production so, team of students and leaders from CU News Corp. You got the Sony tripod right there. Part of CU Boulder's College of Media, Communications and Information. It's gonna be my best friend. It's such a fantastic opportunity being able to go ab abroad and I mean, yeah, like documentary filmmaking is something I, I want to do so badly. Yeah, I'm one of the only two undergrad students to do it. We have professionals, we have students who are learning, uh, and it's an adventure for all of us. We are headed to Cuba. The first stop will be Miami, where they will pick up their main character for the documentary, Guillermo Bill Vidal. The Cuban-born Vidal was just 10 years old when he and his two older brothers were shipped out of the country by their parents to escape the Castro Revolution. The brothers spent a few difficult years in an orphanage in Pueblo, Colorado, before the family reunited in Denver. Guillermo was actually in CU Denver's first ever graduating class back in 1973, right when we became a campus in our own right, separate from Boulder. So his story is very important to us at CU Denver, not to mention all he's accomplished in his life. Despite the disruption in his early life, Guillermo worked hard to become an engineer, rising to top positions in state transportation and the city of Denver, including becoming mayor in 2011. So I went to Cuba in 2001 and I retraced my roots. And on the plane back, as I'm, I, you know, and I, I, it was such a watershed moment for me that I thought, I need to write this story or it'll die with me. So I got my copy of uh, Boxing for Cuba. Now, as he did for the book, Guillermo will revisit the places of his childhood, followed by a bevy of cameras. I really treasure the work that they're doing because it's a snippet of my own life in, in, and being told in a way that I never could. So I think it's a tremendous privilege. The documentary makers followed the story wherever it took them. Every place there was something that he didn't expect and that we didn't expect. By far, my favorite place to shoot was Camagüey. Camagüey is where Guillermo grew up, and there was so much of him to tell there. This is his school. He went to school here, and so, you know, there's still kids there, and we kind of got them playing, playing soccer and playing basketball. He was a huge athlete, so that was really important to him that we got him doing that. So this is in front of his family's church. Um, in kind of a, the main square in Camagüey where they would go. And this is his house. And we just knocked on the door and the lady said, oh, sure, come in. And, and all of a sudden, you know, all these people with cameras came in and were videoing all around her house. But it was probably my favorite moment of the trip. I picked cameras that would shoot very flat so we could have them in post-production match the color style. Barry, Cuba is so colorful. It's so lush. I, it's like a fantasy. I can't express how colorful it is and vibrant, and I really wanted that to show in the video that we shot. For me, it became about capturing people's faces and about the colors. In Cuba, there are just 
the most random pastels everywhere against white. It's like white and pastel everywhere you look is a beautiful shot. Vibrant colors all around them, a filmmaker's dream. But also evident to these storytellers from Colorado, they were in a country in transition, struggling to overcome poverty and to come into the 21st century. The most obvious indicators of that poverty to me were just structural issues with the houses and the buildings. So rocks coming out, uh, pieces of, of plaster missing in places. It's the land where time stood still. It's like uh, you could tell it was a beautiful woman who has aged and no longer wears makeup and still uh, has a tattered dress, but you can still see her beauty. And so that's how Cuba is to me. A part of that beauty, the people they met. I loved interacting with the kids. People were interested in the United States and how things were, um, asking questions, and just comparing lives. But it was really neat um, to see how much we did have in common. Take on me. Take on me. And there was another surprise to come. I had the lovely fortune of having my birthday in Cuba. I will never forget the fact that Andy, our tour guide, managed to convince the lady of the house that he was staying at to bake me a birthday cake. And for me that was really special because I know that they're still on ration cards with supplies that they are able to get, like flour, sugar, anything like that. I thought there would be a little more animosity, I guess. But I didn't experience that at all. I, anyone who spoke English was so eager to speak with me and to welcome me and just very, very kind and very present. And I think that that's something that I really loved about being there. 